Hi, this is Scott Von Helt, otherwise known as SVH, and I'd like to welcome you to the very first You Rock Guitar webinar. Um, we are starting a new webinar series here to kind of go through a lot of the functions and features of the You Rock Gen 2. And um, yeah, so we're going to start off today with some real basic things. I want to let everybody know that uh, we're going to be answering questions at the end of the uh, webinar. So we want to make sure that you log on to uh, either Facebook or Twitter or right here through live stream. You can also submit your questions. Um, so be submitting those questions throughout the uh, webinar. And at the very end, we'll go over all those and kind of give you some answers and that kind of thing. We're also going to be giving away a copy of Guitar Pro, um, the LE version, which is a really great notation and transcription um, uh, tablature software that you can use. Uh, works great with the uh, UROC guitar, so we're going to be giving that away and I'll have some more details at the end of the webinar on how to uh, submit for that. Um, some of the topics that we're going to cover in this particular webinar is um, kind of what is MIDI? Um, what are some of the pros and cons of MIDI for guitarists? Uh, what are some of the limitations and things that we have to uh, take a look at and factor in? Um, points for guitarists to kind of keep in mind as they jump into the MIDI world and uh, discover what playing MIDI guitar is kind of like. Uh, we're going to go over connectivity, how it works, uh, a lot of the main features and functions, built-in sound, uh, si sounds from the uh, built-in synth module. Um, I'm going to explain the buttons and things like that, how those work. We're going to talk a little bit about the tap and slide functions um, and how those really aid your technique. Um, Talk a little bit about fret select, chorus, and transpose, some of the uh, features of the Gen 2 there. And uh, we're going to set up a custom preset. I'm going to show you how to um, go through and customize the layers of the presets and things like that. And uh, show you how to do custom tunings, um, drop tunings, and save your presets and things like that for later. So we're going to cover a lot in this uh, webinar and this uh, episode. And as we move along with this series, we're just going to cover a lot more. And we will get into a lot more in-depth um, you know, uh, discussion about each particular facet that we speak about today, but this is going to give you a really great overview of the UROC Guitar Gen 2. Um, so starting off, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about MIDI, um, about guitar synths and MIDI technology and kind of where it's come from, um, where it's evolved over the years, how it's evolved, and kind of where it's brought us um, to today with the UROC Guitar. Um, there's really three main components or three types of technology used um, when you're talking about a guitar synth or MIDI guitar, um, which would be segmented frets, uh, pitch detection, and mechanical switches. And um, these all work in different ways, and I'll kind of go through and explain those. So starting with segmented frets, um, you saw this was kind of like one of the first guitar synth type uh, products out on the market. Um, the synth axe kind of comes to mind. That was one of the first things out there. Um, and basically what a segmented fret does is it takes the fret and you know cuts it into six sections and then you press on those segments of the fret um, with your string and so forth and, and that basically creates the uh, the trigger or the um, the, the uh, mechanism that will trigger the sound. And um, the problem with this, or the big con to this, was that basically it was very costly to manufacture, still very costly to manufacture, because it takes an incredible amount of precision to really get all the little variances um, worked out. You've got these segmented frets that have to be cut perfectly, and then everything has to be laid in, and the fretboard has to be perfectly straight, and you have to have the strings aligned just right, and uh, any kind of little um, buzz or fret buzz or hum or anything like that can really wreak havoc on the signal and that type of thing. So those are something that uh, kind of limits uh, segmented fret technology, but again, a great starting point. Um, very expensive when it first came out, still very expensive today. I think uh, a lot of the segmented fret um, technology instruments that are out there are in the several thousand dollar range. Um, so that's just uh, one of the drawbacks of, of that. Um, but still, you know, a great starting point and something that really paved the way for the technology to come. Um, which would be pitch detection. Um, pitch detection is something that uh, you'll probably see most commonly used in just about, uh, not all of, but m most or the majority of the MIDI guitar uh, oriented things that you see today will use some sort of pitch detection. And um, it, it works great um, in terms of it gives you a more real feel. Um, you can do bends and things like that that you can't normally do um, with some sort of a switch or button type um, controller. But 
there's always some sort of latency. There's always latency, especially in the lower strings. Uh, when you get into the lower frequencies and lower pitches and things like that, um, the rate of the frequency, there's always going to be some sort of uh, delay. Um, typically, it's going to be about a 12 millisecond delay that you're going to experience with just about any kind of pitch detection device. And when you factor in um, a computer, even the fastest, you know, MacBooks out there will give you about a 10 millisecond delay. Um, things like that. And once you hook you up to your DAW or VST or your sound module, there's a little connectivity delay there. All of that adds up, and every millisecond counts when you're talking about MIDI guitar. Um, so the tracking and things like that to avoid latency, you want every little millisecond squashed out that you can. So that's one um, kind of drawback of pitch detection is that there's always that inherent little bit of latency. Um, but again, it's come a long way. It's gotten a lot better over the years and definitely is probably one of the more predominant uh, technologies that you'll see out there in regards to MIDI or guitar synth. Um, mechanical switches um, would be the next type. And this would be basically kind of like an individual button that you'd have at each fret. and um, what that does is it gives you a lot better um, tracking capability because it's basically like using a keyboard MIDI controller. But the problem is it's kind of like using a keyboard MIDI controller. Now you're pushing buttons again um, and it's almost like you know pressing keys in the form of a button with your fretting hand and it's really not a natural feel um, or flow for guitarists. Um, so if you're playing scales or certain chord forms and things like that it may just feel a little unnatural. But again the tracking um, is better and it's a lot more like using a keyboard controller. So those are really the three main types of guitar synth or um, MIDI guitar oriented technologies that are out there. and. Um, the U-Rock guitar is a little bit different and um, the reason for that being it uses fretboard sensor technology which is um, kind of a a really unique thing because if you look at the U-Rock guitar you look at the neck it looks like a real neck with strings and frets and if you touch it with your hand it feels like a real you know neck with strings it feels like you have strings here each one of these sensors um, is you know shaped like a string feels like a string and when you press down on it you get that you know instant connection and that um, very very minimal um, time frame of latency at all um, and that's really what's the great thing about it it's so, so natural and it feels like you're playing a guitar um, so for a guitar player there's always been a lot of factors and things that kind of either shy you away from MIDI guitar or um, make us kind of go, well, man, this I tried this and it doesn't track great or things like that. It's really an adjustment. There's a lot of different things to take into consideration. One of the beauties of playing guitar is the tone that you get from your instrument or your amp or the way that you're playing finesses certain little nuances out of the notes and out of the music. That's one of the real joys of guitar. You know, there's things that we love. You, you, you know, you got your prize Les Paul that you plug in your prize Marshall amp and you dial in your tone just right and you play it and that sound is just something that um, strikes a chord within you and it's, it, it's something that you can't replace. Um, same if you have like a favorite Strat or Tele or something that just has that silky smooth clean sound or really bright or warm tone. Um, th that's something that you you grow to love and you embrace and it becomes part of you and your playing and your your style as a guitar player, your identity as a guitar player. And I think that for some, re uh, for some reason that scares people away a lot when it comes to the realm of MIDI. Um, this isn't to replace your Les Paul or those things. You, you, you still want that. You, you want that connection and that closeness with your, your prized instruments and things like that. This is just another tool. This is another um, another tool for expression, another instrument that's really going to open your creativity and give you the chance to use sounds and instruments and things like that that really have only been available for keyboard players. Um, for years, all this, these sound libraries and synth modules and things like that have all been really geared towards keyboard players who can push a lever and it triggers the sound and it works very good. There's still latency with keyboards, keyboard controllers. You're always going to experience a little bit of latency um, in that type of situation. But again, that technology has been there for them for years. And 
you know, we've just stood by with our effects pedals and things like that and gone, well, I can do this. L listen to this cool reverb or this cool tremolo or, you know, I can use a wah pedal. And, and those types of things are great, but this really opens the whole spectrum of sound. Um, really limitless sound possibilities once you dive into using MIDI. Um, so those are some things to keep in mind. Uh, a real important thing to think of and remember when you're using a MIDI guitar controller or a MIDI guitar or MIDI in general is um, it, you got to think like the instrument that you're going to be playing. Um, for instance, pardon me, if you put on a flute patch and you have the flute patch going and you say, all right, I'm going to play Eruption on a flute patch and it's going to sound awesome. Well, it might sound pretty good, but it's probably not going to sound like a guitar playing Eruption with a flute sound. Um, because MIDI um, sound banks, libraries, they're, they're realistic. The, the sounds are very true to, you know, the velocity and the breathiness and all the different nuances that go into getting that exact sound and tone out of that instrument. All is, you know, programmed into these sound banks. So when you go to use a flute sound, for instance, you know, there's that breathiness and airiness and things like that. And you can't two-hand tap and hammer on and pull off on a on a flute and things like that so those types of techniques might not translate the greatest on a flute patch um, so a lot of times you'll hear people say you know oh I've tried this MIDI thing and you know it's cool but it, there's something wrong with it it doesn't track right you know and that's not the case these instruments and this technology for years has been tracking really good it's, but you have to adjust your thinking and you have to adjust the way that you approach playing each instrument. They're all played differently. Um, there's, you know, certain nuances to how they're played. And you really have to kind of open your mind and think that way in terms of, you know, what the instrument is that you're playing, how it's played, um, what, what would this, you know, what would a flute player do? How would they approach this? What type of things would they go for? Um, that'll really greatly expand your... Um, your technique and your creativity and it'll also just kind of make you you know it, it jogs your brain and makes you go in different directions and think differently and approach things differently and try different techniques and that's one of the beauties of the U-Rock guitar is that it really gives guitar players the opportunity to use sounds and instrumentation that they've never used before and really open that sound palette and creativity and um, you know I really admire people like Trent Reznor and Danny Elfman and guys that you know have hone their craft as a piano player and then use the technology around the instrument that they have to you know really add the color and the layers and the moods and all those types of things that they do for their music and you know for guitar players they they have the ability to do that now and you can really layer all these different sounds and all these different instruments and go into go into places that you've never gone before as a guitarist and that's really the beauty of this um, so with that being said, you know, you want to keep in mind that uh, you do have to kind of approach it a little bit differently. And uh, once you do that, you're really going to get a lot of joy out of playing it because it's a really amazing instrument and tool for your creativity. Creativity. Pardon me. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the connectivity, how it works, some of the features and functions, and kind of dive into that. So without further ado, here's the U-Rock Guitar Gen 2. Um, when you first turn it on, make sure I got my volume up, it's going to jam out and play a cool little song here. All right, it should. And then, um, okay, going through some of the functions and everything that we got going on here. Um, Basically, we've already talked a little bit about the neck here and the fretboard sensor technology. So again, you have that real feel with your frets and so forth and so on here. Um, going into the next um, area here are pickup and the strings. The strings here are real steel strings, so you get that real feeling of playing the strings. Um, the pickups here um, pick up the, the sound from the strings here, and in further episodes, we'll kind of get into customizing um, kind of the way the pickup works, the sensitivity, velocity, um, connectivity, all those types of things. Um, so that we'll get into that more in future episodes. Um, okay, going on here to the next part, um, kind of looking at our connectivity here, we've got... Um, your on off switch here you've got MIDI out 5 pin you've got your USB you've also got a quarter inch and then you've got 2 8 inch which is an in and an out 
Um, the in and out is really great because you can plug in an iPod or some sort of device like that and then use a headphone output to jam along with that type of thing. Uh, you've got your quarter inch output so all your internal guitar sounds, synth sounds um, that are in the synth module inside can all be sent to your amp or your recording device or interface via the quarter inch. And then you can also do USB uh, MIDI. So basically you can just connect your um, U-Rock guitar to your computer via MIDI and you're completely, or I'm sorry, via USB and it'll make that MIDI connection with your software. Uh, really simple plug and play capability there. Also, you can use the MIDI 5 pin out. Um, just gives you a little different kind of connectivity. One thing I like to mention about this and one of the beauties of the U-Rock is that you can combine these. Um, so you can use the MIDI out and then you can also use your audio out, your quarter inch um, analog out, and you can blend those. So a lot of times I uh, will take you know, the quarter inch out and go into one input on my interface and then I'll use the uh, the MIDI out and blend some sounds from the U-Rock here, which you can layer sounds. So you can use you know two layered sounds in here plus another sound that you have on your uh, VST or plug-in or whatever the case may be and layer those sounds together which is really really an amazing thing and gives you that ability to really again just kind of expand your your musical palette so to speak. Um, you've got a volume control here, a little jog wheel um, that you can use for a couple different functions, your whammy bar and uh, some control up and down buttons here. These will work with like your uh, chorus function and the transpose and some other things what we'll talk about later. And um, then we'll go over the buttons and things here. Um, I seem to have lost power on this unit for some reason. But uh, we'll go over some of the features here as we're figuring out the power situation here. We've got um, all the different buttons here. The music, game, open, slide, tap, U-Rock, guitar, synth, um, our LED display. We've got our preset up and down buttons, our track button here, our uh, MIDI button and play and record. So essentially a lot of these are going to be kind of self-explanatory what they do. Play and record is going to be for your um, backing tracks and your jam along and things like that. You're also going to use your record in conjunction with the music button for um, saving presets and that type of thing. Uh, we've got the music button, um, I just explained what that's going to do. Open um, is for open tunings and things like that. So when you get into doing an open tuning um, or a drop tuning or something like that, there's a lot of presets already custom built in here for different tunings and that type of thing. So using the open button will do that. Uh, tap and slide, I'm going to talk about in depth here a little bit, but uh, the tap feature basically gives you um, kind of tapping ability on the fretboard and um, I'll, again I'll explain a little bit more about that and also the slide function again kind of opens up the way that you can slide up and down the neck. Um, I'm going to take just a second here and hand this off so that I can get this powered up and show you a few more things. So I'll take the second to remind you that we are taking questions at the end of this. Um, so we'd like you to go ahead and you know submit your questions here on live stream or through Facebook or Twitter, and uh, make sure you go on there and like those as well. And again, um, we're going to be giving away Guitar Pro. Um, LE version, which is a really great notation and tablature creation software, um, works really great with the, the U-Rock guitar. And um, yeah, we're going to be doing that at the end of the show here, or at the end of the webinar. And uh, basically, you just email info at urockguitar.com, and the first 100 people that mention that they saw SVH on the webinar today um, will enter you in for uh, that uh, prize. All right, we're good to go. We are rocking. Let me just plug this back in real fast. Okay. So let me turn it back on because you got to hear the cool jam. All right. We are fired up. Okay. 
So now, going over the features and the functions of the buttons here. We've got a couple different things. Um, once you get into, let's start out with layers and presets. Um, basically, calling up a preset is really easy. You're just going to go up and down with the up and down buttons, and that'll scroll through the different presets. Now, each preset's already custom built with um, different sounds. Some of them have two layers of sound, a guitar layer, synth layer, or two guitars, or two synths, that type of thing. And those, all those user, or I mean, sorry, all the built-in presets are user customizable. So you can go through and change any of these presets, any combination. Um, that's a big uh, question that people have about layering and things like that. Now, we have the guitar layer on right now. There's also a synth layer, so if I just press that button, now I've engaged the synth layer. So now that I'm going to have the guitar layer here and the synth layer here. Um, now in this particular um, preset, I've got a, um, a distorted fifth guitar. So let me just kind of... So I've got that, distorted fifth. And then on the bottom, on the synth side, I um, actually added a... Well, this is a synth sound. I'm going to show you actually... What we're going to do, we're going to change that now. So the synth, if I press that button and I scroll down, I want to add the evil bass because that is a cool sound and blends really well with the distorted fifths. Okay, so I scroll down, holding the synth button to 13. I let that go. And now I got the evil bass. Okay, and then one of the things I mentioned earlier was the transpose function. Um, this particular preset has the transpose function in it. Um, so if I push this button, see now I got, it went up. So it changed the, uh, the octave. So we just transposed it. I'm gonna transpose it back on. So I go back down and get that low. And now I'm gonna add the guitar layer just by pressing the guitar button. It's gonna turn that layer back on. And now I'm blending the two. Okay, so now I want to make one more change. Um, I do a lot of things in drop tuning. Um, you, like I said, with this, you can do custom tunings. Uh, we'll get into the, uh, the control panel app on another episode and uh, tell you how to change your custom tunings there. But you can also do it internally here. And again, you can just call up one of the open tuning presets or custom tuning presets that are built in with the open function. So like I said, I use drop D a lot. Um, so I know that if I just push open here, preset number seven is the drop D tuning. So I just scroll to seven, let go, and now, oops, turn the volume back on. Now I'm dropped two. Okay, so now we've drop tuned that whole preset. So the guitar layer and the synth layer are both dropped um, to drop D and we've already changed the customizing of the preset so we've changed our sound to what we want now why is this music button flashing at me well that's because the uroc has a really nice little reminder here to let you know that you haven't saved your preset yet you've made a change but you haven't saved it and that's flashing to notify you of that so how we can get around that or save it you press the music button and record and voila Everything's been saved. So now all the custom sounds that we've changed are saved to this preset number. The open tuning that we've done is saved to this. And when you turn this back on and or turn it off and back on, your preset's going to be saved and you're all good to go. And then you can go back in and customize it, change it, go and change those sounds back to something else, that type of thing. I will also mention that um, the guitar layer or the synth layer can handle either or type of instrument. So say you want a 12 string acoustic guitar on your guitar layer and you want a clean strat on underneath that you can put that on the synth layer and do that as well um, we'll get into this in more detail in the next episodes as well but also you can customize the level of each of those so you can change the volume so you can really get a perfect blend of you know piano and strings or whatever instruments you want to stack together and layer so it's really customizable in that aspect you can go through and just you know, take every preset and layer it to your liking and then 
you know layer different types of sounds so it really gives you again a lot of sound capabilities just built in with the internal guitar synth module that's built into this and uh, with the Gen 2 the, the sounds have really um, have really come a long way it's really got some great sounds in here and uh, I use a lot of the internal sounds often you know a lot of little recordings or practices and things like that that I use the UROC for um, even as just a practice tool and things like that the internal sounds are, are really good and they really kind of open your mind to trying different things and might lead you to another plug-in or DAW or something like that that's a similar sound um, that you wouldn't have discovered before so really dive into some of the internal sounds and things like that because they're really good um, a couple other things I just want to mention real quick I talked about the tap function and the uh, slide function and I want to get into that a little bit more uh, tap function basically if you touch the the strings now you're not getting any signal you have to actually you know, strum the strings down here um, but if you put it in tap mode now as soon as you touch that fretboard sensor technology it's going to go ahead and um, trigger that sound so this is a really cool feature and function and something that really helps with a lot of the uh, concerns and things that people have about being able to pull off certain techniques and things like that in a MIDI realm or MIDI environment um, you can do things a lot differently like if you're going to be doing some sort of a string part or something like that that requires a real tight staccato type thing using the tapping is really well um, for that a lot of bass parts and things like that respond really well to tapping and that type of thing and it just it really tracks great really opens up you know the tapping aspect of that there's so many really great players out there right now doing two hand tapping and eight finger taps and all kinds of stuff and this really accommodates that type of thing really well with the tap function it really again it just kind of opens up the creativity um, kind of opens the ability of this to play more like a guitar and more like a real um, you know string and wood instrument as opposed to a MIDI controller um, it really just responds more guitar like because of that added feature and function so the tap mode is really cool I definitely encourage you to check that out and uh, try some different things with that um, then slide slide is another one now when you don't slide this kind of works much like a keyboard it's um, it's kind of like playing one note in succession on a keyboard like that when you put on slide mode what it does is the uh, magic inside the machine here bends the note from note to note so as it bends it creates that better slide capability so you get more of that more of that real natural kind of slide type sound it sounds less like using a jog wheel or pitch bend or even the whammy you can use for you know bending and things like that but it, it basically just kind of bends the note from one to the other giving more of a realistic slide sound and feel and that type of thing so um, the tap and the slide functions again two built-in features that really help you use the UROC guitar in a very realistic guitar like way um, that's really again one of the things that uh, that really impressed me um, as a recording artist and a, a touring guy um, when I first plugged mine in and started messing around with it and things like that the sounds were really cool and it was cool that you could do the layers and things like that but it really amazed me is how it felt very natural as opposed to you know I do a lot of world music and ethnic things and trying to sit and play a flute part or a violin part on a keyboard controller is just you know next to impossible to get it to really sound accurate and, and true but with this you know I'm already in my realm and I'm already in my comfort zone and it really just you know makes me think a little bit more like a violin player or more like a, a pianist or a flute player and 
just to play it that way and um, again really expands the creativity um, so that's a little bit about the tap and the slide mode little little nuances built in to just kind of make it a little bit more guitar like for you um, also I mentioned that there is a chorus and transpose function which I showed you the transpose a little bit um, some of the presets have the chorus built in as well um, how that basically works and I just want to breeze over that really fast and again we'll talk more about all these every aspect of this will really break open and get deep into throughout the series um, but the some of the presets have chorus already built into it and when that chorus is there and that preset sound has that built in then these um, functions will engage the on and off for the chorus or the transpose which I showed you with the other um, when I transposed it so a um, little bit just a brief touch on you know chorus and transpose and also the functionality of these buttons which again we'll, we'll go over a lot more later um, so yeah, we've kind of talked about setting up a custom preset, um, presets and layers and how they work and that type of thing, how to save it, um, dropping the tunings and that kind of thing. One last thing I'd like to mention before we uh, kind of take a break and go into questions, I'd like to uh, mention fret select. Fret select is also another um, type of way to navigate around uh, the instrument and things like that, which basically just gives you, um, you touch the fret instead of using the buttons and so forth to go through. So you basically you know you want to scroll through different presets or change a sound or something like that you uh, can do it that way so you know holding the guitar button and then touching the different frets is going to give you the the number of it's going to call up the preset number that you want so one through ten is going to give you you know numbers one through ten for and then uh, you go down to the next string and it starts at 11 there and then goes up from there so it's just another navigational way we'll get into fret select more I'll be really honest with you it's something I haven't used a whole lot um, so I like to learn a little bit more about it myself even and uh, I know that there's a lot of really cool things that you can do and I've seen some guys like whiz through um, on videos and stuff like that on YouTube like whiz through changing sounds and presets and all that using fret select and buttons down here and everything else so um, yeah, if you're savvy to the technology, there's so many things that you can do with this from a simple level all the way up to a really complex, you know, professional level. There's so many things that you can do with the U-Rock guitar. And it really, again, it's, you know, we gave you a brief overview today, but one of the main points that I'd like to drive home is that, uh, you know, again, it really puts the power of keyboards in a guitar player's hand, which is really opens up the, the sound spectrum, opens up your ability to uh, really do some different and unique things. And also, um, look at the fact that, you know, the technology, as I've explained, has come a long way. It's really evolved and it's grown. Um, and it's gotten a little bit less expensive in some aspects and things like that but it's been really difficult over the years and that's one of the challenges is to manufacture something on a mass level that really has great quality and sound and playability and all that type of thing and you know the U-Rock guitar has really addressed all that and it really is a great playing uh, guitar, great playing MIDI controller, great sounding unit, and uh, for the price point that it's at, it's unbelievable and something you should definitely check out if you don't own one already. Um, if you're a guitar player and you do any kind of recording or any kind of MIDI work at all, you should definitely have one of these. If you travel a lot, that type of thing, great travel guitar. Again, you can, uh, I didn't even mention this yet, but you can snap the neck right off, put that in your backpack or suitcase, and you're on, the, on your way. So great for all that type of thing. I have even plugged mine into my car stereo and jammed um, through my car stereo during uh, Carmageddon 405 stop traffic. So don't I don't recommend playing and driving, but if you're stopped, go for it. All right, so that's a little overview of the U-Rock Guitar Gen 2. Um, we're going to go into some questions and things like that, so um, we've got some questions here. Um, if you want to try to throw in your last minute questions, again, um, pop them on live stream, Facebook or Twitter. Be sure to go on the Facebook and Twitter pages, um, like us, follow us, and uh, yeah, keep, keep in touch with what we got going on. We're going to be doing a lot more in this series, and uh, we really appreciate you guys uh, being here and being a part of it. Um, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a 20 30 second break here just to pull up the questions and then we're going to go through all your questions so don't go anywhere hang tight and we're going to get to your questions now
All right, everybody. Thanks for uh, sticking around. We are back, and uh, again, uh, we're going over the U Rock Guitar Gen 2. Uh, this is our first webinar, and again, we really appreciate everybody's participation. We're getting a lot of really great questions, and we're going to dive into those. I have to make one quick correction, which I think is probably going to put a smile on a lot of people's faces. Um, we're actually giving away. It's not a contest to give away a copy of Guitar Pro. It's actually the first hundred people that uh, email us and say they saw the webinar get guitar pro 6 light for free um, so we're actually giving away a hundred um, copies of it so I was way off on that one so that's a good thing and we're going to continue to do that on uh, the next webinar and throughout the series we're also going to have more um, giveaways and things like that so if you're not one of the first hundred don't fret just tune in next time and we'll get you the next time hopefully all right so um, moving on we're going to dive into some of the questions here um, first question on deck here is from MIDI Guitar. Um, why does the U-Rock guitar not play in tune or pitch in the organ number 12? Does anyone understand this? Um, I'm curious if you have the Gen 1 or the Gen 2. Um, that would be something uh, that would kind of clarify a little bit for us. Um, the Gen 2 um, is 12. Uh, 12 is the over, overdrive, so I don't know if it's the type of sound or the the um, the preset that you're you're going for that specific organ. Um, okay, I see here you have the Gen One. Um, okay, the sound of the organs number twelve, um, beautiful out of tune. You have the Gen One. Um, okay, we're gonna we'll review the sound and we'll see if there's some issues with that. Um, I don't uh, I, I don't have any experience with that myself to know. Um, I, I have a Gen 1. I haven't played it in a long time ever since I got the Gen 2. Um, so out of memory, I don't really recall that uh, there being a pitch issue with that. But we'll definitely look into that and see what we can do for you there. Um, and if I get any more insight on that before the end of this, I'll pass that along to you. Um, okay, next question is from Bruce Burt. Uh, says my first U Rock guitar had a very stiff velocity curve, and you s and I sold it immediately. Have the new models been improved in that aspect? Um, yeah, I mean definitely. We've definitely made a lot of changes to the pickup system. The Gen 2 um, provides improved dynamics and sensitivity and that type of thing. Additionally, there are seven different velocity curves in the YRG that can be used to adjust your to your playing style. So again, and these are things that we'll cover um, in depth in the next few seminars or webinars, um, where we'll go over you know velocity curve, uh, sensitivity, crosstalk filter, all the different things that are built in to help customize it to your playing style and technique and that's a it's a really important point to bring up because you really do have to customize it for your uh, for your your own playing and that type of thing so yes that's been greatly improved on the gen 2 um, over the gen 1 um, also you're asking where you can buy these um, there's several online stores um, guitar center has them there's all kinds of different places that you can pick these up um, they're they're pretty readily available a lot of places so if you have a question or you need a specific dealer or need to find something like that you can always contact sales um, or you can info, uh, email info at urockguitar.com and we'll be glad to try to point you into direction of one towards your area um, let's see also uh, we mentioned in the promo something about playing to notation um, what do we need for that um, he says I use finale already do I just set up finale to respond to the U rock guitar yes um, you can definitely do that um, also if you want to discriminate between strings make sure to set the guitar in MIDI mode uh, 19 you want to have a MIDI mode or channel 19. Um, this puts each string on a different MIDI channel, gives you a lot more connectivity. And this is something, again, I'll go over a lot in a, a future episode because I use the MIDI a lot. I, I basically use it this way. Um, and I've found with a lot of certain sounds and presets and VSTs and plugins, um, changing the MIDI channel can really greatly improve just the, the connectivity between the, the device and the, uh, the DAW or VST that you're using. Um, okay, so that's um, who do I email to be one of the first 100 to get Guitar Pro 6? Info at urockguitar.com. So go ahead and log on to or email info at urockguitar.com. Mention that you uh, are uh, watching the webinar, that you saw the webinar, and um, go ahead and, and do that, and we'll hook you up. 
Um, all right, let me scroll down here to the next question. Um, I could, let's see, oh, there we go, okay. Okay, I'm going to try to say this correctly. Uh, Mr. Perlish, Perlish Sells. Mr. Perlish Sells. Good morning, sir. Um, Gen 1, extreme lag guitar. I tried to record with MIDI on Forte, very laggy. Um, let's see. Usually lag is a, is a system setup problem. Um, the technology doesn't have a lag, but there should... Um, you should contact customer support and you know put in a ticket if you feel that there's that there's really lag. Um, you know customer service here is impeccable. They work really hard to you know try to resolve any kind of issues, troubleshoot any kind of problem that you may have, and it really may just be a system issue. Um, again, when you're working in a MIDI environment, um, the uh, the device or the the DAW or VST or sound module is just really basically getting the signal that's triggered from the uh, controller and uh, a lot of times if there's a latency issue or some sort of connectivity issue or something like that it, it nine ninety nine percent of the time it's within the software some sort of adjustment needs to be made um, for instance I use reason a lot uh, propeller head reason um, I have a really old version 2.5 and um, sometimes I'll have a little connectivity weirdness it's you know just when I plug it in it's not really plug and play and I have to go in and kind of reroute the MIDI channel and things like that I always have to select channel 19 on the MIDI channel for uh, the UROC and it fixes everything and you got great connectivity so that would be something to kind of take uh, into consideration and look at there um, let's see also uh, let's see usually ASO one for all is the best driver for Windows Macs are pretty good without any additional drivers so that uh, just a little point there about the um, the lag um, oh I guess it's ISO for AISO for all sorry about that and then uh, how's the lag time for the newest models for recording on the computer um, the latency is really low um, it's very insignificant par compared to the latency of the computer system um, we're as fast or faster than any keyboard controller out there really um, try using a five pin MIDI jack directly to a hardware synth or module and you'll get a faster response or, or the fastest response um, so yeah a lot of times things like that um, with regards again it's kind of the same thing I mentioned when you experience lag or latency or something like that in a VST or DAW or something like that it's usually a, a setting within the program that can be tweaked or adjusted a little bit to kind of help increase the velocity and things like that you have all these different velocity settings and adjustments that you can do within the UROC itself but then you got to keep in mind that most programs have all those little adjustments and settings too and a lot of times they're going to just default to what they are and you might have to adjust them to get a little better performance okay so um, buzz terrier why would you not have slide on by default um, that's a good question and I guess because um, th my, my particular answer would be because you want the ability to use it or not use it and you can really do different things with it um, it's kind of an accessory to um, aiding that real feel um, a little more official answer um, because we're we're a MIDI controller and we need to take into account that external sense modules um, that they are not all configured for the same pitch bend range by default and that type of thing so it, you, we want to make sure that you know it doesn't slide to an incorrect pitch or something like that by default um, so again kind of falls in line with customizing where you're using it and things like that and how the two connect um, will have a lot of effect there so um, and same thing with tap mode because I kind of thought that when I initially got I said well tap mode is so cool why wouldn't you use tap mode all the time and, and you don't always necessarily want um, a sound to trigger as soon as you touch the string um, with regards to a regular um, steel string and wood guitar you put your hands on the the uh, on the fretboard it doesn't necessarily make a noise unless you're doing a hammer on you know unless you're really doing that technique and striking it a little harder just putting your hand on the frets wouldn't really make a sound so again keeping in, in 
keeping everything as realistic as possible for the guitar player feel, um, I, I think having the, t the tap and the slide separated and not in there by default. But again, you can customize those and save those settings on any preset or any sound that you have, and then by default your preset will be set to that. Um, okay, what are the major differences? Zero Frost asks, uh, what are the major differences between Gen 1 and Gen 2? Um, well, Gen 2 has an updated pickup system. It improves the sensitivity and consistency of the system. Um, there's a lot of new sounds, which I mentioned before, a lot of new really um, enhanced and upgraded sounds that really sound great. Uh, Built-in chorus for internal sounds, improved mapping to MIDI controller numbers, um, improved tracking parameters, um, Ableton surf surface control, uh, it's got a layering system built in. Um, a lot more information on the website under the products tab. If you go there, it'll basically tell you all the upgrades and differences between Gen 1 and Gen, well, all the new things that are in Gen 2. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more information there, and it's definitely an upgrade in terms of just the overall playability and um, and connectivity. It just it definitely responds um, a little bit more like um, I, I think what a lot of of you folks have been asking for um, in regards to Gen 1, looking to move forward into Gen 2. Okay, um, Mike asks, is there a way to flash the ROM to upgrade from Gen 1 to the current model? We currently do not have an upgrade path from Gen 1 to Gen 2, um, but the latest Gen 1 firmware has a lot of features and updates that were not in the original release. So if you have a Gen 1 and you go in there and put in the latest firmware, you're definitely going to see some improvement there. Um, we highly recommend that you update the software, log on to urockguitar.com to do that, and that'll, uh, that'll give you the, the features there um, that have been added into the, to the newer firmware of the Gen 1. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for the YRG control panel, which I had previously downloaded, but fa can't find it on my hard drive. Can you please provide a link for the Windows software for uh, YRG Gen 1? This is on our website for registered users. If you can't get it, um, you can send an email to info at urockguitar.com and we'll get you the link. So yeah, um, if you're a registered user, you should be able to find that link. Um, so you can just go to urockguitar.com, register, and go into the, uh, the software download uh, panel there, and that'll give you that ability. Or you can just email info at urockguitar.com, and we'll send you the link. Um, okay. Mr. Parrish Sells asks again, um, can we trade in our Gen 1 for the Gen 2? And this is a question that I see a lot on the forums and there's a lot of talk about. Um, we do offer a loyalty program that allows you to send in your Gen 1 guitar for a discount off of the Gen 2. Um, you do need a proof of purchase for the Gen 1 in order to qualify for the 20% discount. Um, for more info on that, uh, contact you rock or contact info at you rock guitar.com and they'll give you details on that and um, yeah so that's where that stands uh, Chris s I have a gen 1 I want to set up a custom tuning to GCEA ukulele can't get the G up an octave um, you should probably email support on this one um, it should be doable with custom tunings, but they, they'd like to check this in-house and kind of try that and see if uh, they can really replicate that ukulele tuning for you. Um, so yeah, let us check that out. Um, please email and um, we'll, at the support, please email support and we'll help you out there. Um, let's see. Um, okay, I'd like to just kind of take this second to um, to say, you know, again, thank you so much for your support. We sent out a, a mailer, uh, I think a month or so ago, and asked for some questions and some insight on the things that you guys would like covered. We got a really great response, and we really appreciate it. And uh, again, it's really a pleasure for me to be a part of this. Um, I discovered the U-Rock guitar about two years ago, and it's really changed a lot for me in terms of my approach as a recording artist 
um, and an engineer and producer, that type of thing. And it's really, uh, it's really just opened a lot of doors for me. And as an artist and as someone who's passionate about creative expression, um, it's really an honor to be able to kind of f fly the flag for UROC and uh, to be an artist for them and to be able to be a clinician and present these types of things to you guys. So I appreciate your support and I appreciate your uh, willingness to uh, listen to me yap for a while and uh, we appreciate it and just keep the questions coming in um, I'm also really active on the forum so if you go to the UROC guitar forum um, you'll see me there under SVH um, if you have any questions you can personal you know personal message private message me or send something up through the forum there's a lot of really great information there and really something that you guys should uh, tap into because uh, there's a lot of great resources there and a lot of really creative things that people are doing with their their instrument I'm always kind of amazed at how extensive people are taking their creativity with this thing and it's it's really inspiring so um, really great thing any suggestions that you have for future topics um, for future webinars that type of thing please keep them coming in um, through the forum through Facebook through Twitter um, through uh, email, that type of thing, email us at info at urockguitar.com. And again, we'll be more than happy to, uh, to you know, go through and uh, answer your questions and try to really customize these webinars so that you get the best information that you can. And uh, lastly, I want to just remind you again that uh, if you haven't already done so, go on to uh, your email box there and type in info at urockguitar.com. Let us know that you saw the webinar and the first hundred people will get a copy of Guitar Pro 6 Lite. And um, that is, uh, again, a really great transcription um, software that you can use. Actually, if you get on our YouTube page, you'll see a little demo video that I did of it. Um, really short, brief introduction, just kind of showing you how it connects and that type of thing. But a really great uh, really cool product that really pairs well with the UROC guitar so check it out and again we really appreciate uh, your attendance and let us know what you think keep the feedback coming in and uh, get out there and create and have fun with your uh, expression of music and uh, yeah open your mind to some new tools and things out there that are available and uh, check out the UROC guitar and enjoy all right, and we'll see you next time. Keep uh, tabs on the website and the forums, uh, Facebook, Twitter. We'll make an announcement here um, shortly about uh, when the next webinar is going to be. And again, we thank you very much.